Okay. So um, my background um, predominantly is in sports science. Um, and at the moment, like you said, I am working with Bristol City. So I do a day a week with them, which is quite challenging. Um, so I think um, I'll probably have some similar challenges to what Laura has had previously um, and what Matt might have working part-time in clubs too. Um, so I worked at Bristol for the last season and um, day to day is very similar to what I do at Ox United. So it's checking in with all the the team is in the members of staff, so that multidisciplinary team and getting updates on things like injuries, et cetera, and what sort of that day of training is going to look like, if not what next week's going to look like. And then um, going in and checking in with the chef um, and the catering team. So just looking at any sort of little problems or how we might be able to respond to some of those sort of changing demands coming up. Um, and then with both of them, I do do a little bit of work with the academy. So previously, I've done a lot of work with Ox United Academy from under nines to we've well, now got an under 23 squad. And that was a lot of education with uh, players and parents, uh, coaches and then digs as well. So host families too. Um, and at Bristol, we've got an under 23 squad that I've done a little bit of education with. So um, it'd be nice to do a bit more with them. Um, I do definitely enjoy working with younger age groups. Um, I feel like, you know, there's, there's so much that you can do. And I thought it was really interesting what Laura's just shared there, of that sort of brilliant structure and um, that almost that curriculum that you can take players through. Often when you get players that, um, you know, come through to first team, they've come from completely different clubs, they all have a very different understanding and appreciation of nutrition um and it's trying to sort of you've got that time to get everyone up to the same level or same understanding you never ever manage it um so i guess if everyone went through that same process it would be very different um i guess my sort of priorities with differences when i work with a first team in academy from that is that um everything i do with first team i always try and make sure it results in winning matches getting points um, so that could be a whole host of things, but um, there's not really, you know, much point in doing something unless it's going to win you games. And I guess my difference with the academy and, and why I enjoy working with academies is that, you know, there's just so much that you can do and you have that really um, important part of that duty of care. Uh, so a lot of like what Laura pointed out, a lot of things are about health and just being a healthy athlete, um, as well as then those sort of focuses on on football nutrition so um if anyone hasn't already definitely watch that documentary on athlete a on netflix because i think that's a really good reminder that we have a duty of care with athletes that we work in our institute um and i guess it's really about building that foundation but laura's described that already and helping them physically develop so often if they don't really care about their health they want to get as big as an athletic as they can and then um, also what Laura sort of pointed out is that, you know, ability to perform at their best and definitely maybe parents, coaches and players always take that as in performing at their best on match day or within the match, but not actually thinking about how well they perform over the rest of the week within their lessons or within their training sessions and actually performing well in training results in a better performance in match. They don't really think about that. And then I think as well, making sure they have positive experiences or even if it's a negative experience, they turn it into a positive. So they're quite, you know, working in academy is quite reflective, I feel. You're constantly thinking about, all right, what didn't work? What's going to work for next time? Um, and helping them do that and then just providing them with lots of opportunities to learn as well within, within their setup around nutrition. And I guess just to talk a little bit about my philosophy and how that might be impacted in my work at Oxford or, or Bristol st um, starting a new role is that and I stole this off of um, Professor Graham Close but first of all I'd always do no harm um, I think that's a given um, so sometimes that just you know might mean doing nothing it's better than doing something and to always look to improve a player's health and um, sometimes you know they could be the best player on the team but they actually might be quite unhealthy um, and just focusing on a few small things can actually make them perform a lot better in terms of their health and minimize risk of injury and illness and then three obviously improve their performance 
and I guess for me I've always thought quite hard about the fact that when you know we're trying to implement those three things or focus on them always reminding ourselves that you know you've got two eyes two ears and one mouth and I think definitely as a part-time practitioner you've got to come in and there's a lot of listening and observing doesn't matter how long you've worked there for um before you sort of give your opinion or say or you know uh, speak so it's getting a lot of information and um especially when you're in there for a short period of time and I think I definitely will always stick to this so just especially when you're starting um so I was you know at both at Oxford and Bristol before me there was a little bit of a nutrition presence um, so it was almost a slight buying to start off with. Um, Oxford hadn't got as many things set up. So Bristol, um, Paddy Orm, who's there, is a brilliant sports scientist and had already set up a lot of things nutrition-wise. So it was really easy for me to be like, oh, great, okay, this is all in place and I can build on this. Whereas Oxford, there was some more things definitely to do from the beginning. Um, so that was quite easy to find the low-hanging fruit there. Um, but it was just always a matter of resources where at Bristol it was a little bit more challenging to find that low hanging fruit because there were a lot of good systems in place as well so um, always pick that low hanging fruit easiest to do those things that give you I guess the biggest bang for your buck as well rather than picking on the small things also I think when you start as well that you kind of want to be able to implement small changes that are gonna you know have a big impact but actually we involve the smallest amount of people as well especially when you don't know other members of staff that well um, and I guess as well in the initially I'm always trying to build meaningful relationships and then during my time I'm always trying to maintain those relationships and that can be with um, obviously all of the multidisciplinary staff and coaching team as well as sort of especially key players and, and making use of those key players so if I use the lockdown as an example um, at Oxford, we haven't brought our chef out of furlough. So we've been um, finding different ways to feed them. They've only got these, hopefully, three games for their playoff. So I was using what I'll call up my key players, contacting them and asking their advice on things that they would like or things they think is going to work and to help me sort of like make my decisions rather than, you know, the staff assuming what would be the best idea. So... Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of my practitioner philosophy and, and, and what I'm sort of doing at the moment with, with those two teams.